so let us start the subject which is design and analysis of algorithms okay so before starting the subject we should know why we are studying the subject now if you have studied some of the programming languages like c java .NET or any other programming languages then you should know that when you are studying these programming languages then you are studying the syntax of these programming languages and how these how you can program in these specific programming languages right and their features when you are studying data structures data structures means you are adding some more new data types to these programming languages for example we have some uh, primitive data types which are integer character floats and now when we are studying data structuring or data structures that means we are adding new data types to enhance the power of these programming languages enhance means that that, that, that means you will be having more capabilities right but when i'm studying design and analysis of algorithms design and analysis of algorithm means you are going to design the algorithms and you are going to analyze these algorithms on the basis of some criteria okay and designing means see if you are studying programming language that means you are studying the syntax but how to program that is given by the algorithm subject how to program what are the different programming techniques we are start going to study these programming techniques into the subject which is design and analysis of algorithms here we'll be more focusing on programming techniques like dynamic programming what is dynamic programming what is greedy programming and then how can we use the power of this dynamic programming or the concept of the dynamic programming to solve real world problems okay so that is your subject which is design and analysis of algorithms fine but let us just let me write the name of the subject name of the subject is design and analysis of algorithms we have design and analysis of algorithms now algorithm means what is an algorithm algorithm means we are going to define some sequence of steps which will be a finite sequence to solve a problem okay we can say algorithm means it is a finite sequence of steps steps to solve a problem okay now this finite sequence of steps is does not necessarily mean then this algorithms can only be applied on computers you can give algorithms to solve different mathematical problems you can give algorithms to say let us suppose you are designing a robot or you are designing a machine automated self automated machine which is going to make a coffee cup of coffee for you then to that machine you have to specify what are the specific steps which it should take to solve the problem it this problem may be creating a cup of coffee coffee right the problem may be go to kitchen bring some water something anything right so if you have any problem and you can formalize some finite steps to solve that problem that solution that steps will be called as algorithms which we specifically call as algos okay and here designing means we are going to design those algorithms right and here analyzing means analysis means we are going to analyze those algorithms on the basis of some kind of criterias okay now what does it mean when i say analyzing those algorithms it mean let us suppose you have a problem you have a problem some problem okay now to solve this problem you can write a program to solve this program problem you can write a program or you can give an algorithm which is going to tell you what are the finite steps you should take to solve this problem okay but the issue is but the thing is it is not necessarily mean when you are writing a program or designing an algorithm that you are going to have only one program or only one algorithm to solve one problem you may be having 
more than one different types of programs or you can propose more than one different algorithms right so what i can say is let us suppose to solve this problem i have a algorithm a1 to solve this problem i have a algorithm a2 to solve this problem i have an algorithm a3 and to solve this problem i have some algorithm let us suppose it is an we have some algorithms but now the question arises if to solve these problems you have some algorithms now out of these algorithms which algorithm is best or which algorithm is better as compared to other one okay now let us say if we have algorithm a1 to solve the problem and algorithm a2 to solve the problem now out of these two algorithms which algorithm is better and which algorithm is going to solve this problem more effectively right so we may be having different kind of criteria by which we are going to analyze these algorithms right so we can have different type of criteria for example let us suppose we create a program to find the factorial of a number now if we create a program to find the factorial of a number you can write infinite number of different programs to find it to find the factorial right now let me just take two small examples i'll take an example of a non recursive programming and i'll take an example for a non for a recursive function you can give any variable to these functions and then out of these two two programs you have to identify which one of these program is better right so what i can do is let us suppose we want to find the factorial of a number so the first function is factorial of a number which is going to return the integer variable and it is going to take the variable n for which you want, want to find the factorial okay now what you can do is let us suppose i am taking one more variable int facto okay which is equal to let us suppose 1 int facto is equal to 1 now i can do for i is equal to or you can say for int i is equal to 1 i less than n i plus plus less than equal to n i plus plus and then we can do facto is equal to facto multiplied by i okay this is the first program and then we are going to return facto okay so this is a very simple non recursive program to find the factorial of a number so we are just using a for loop to find this right and we can write a recursive program also now let us say we have the program which is int fact for int n now if n is equal to 1 or you can say if n is less than equal to 1 then return 1 else return fact of fact of n minus 1 into n so this is a recursive program right so see i have proposed two different solutions to solve one problem and the problem was to find the factorial of a number okay now out of these two programs what do you think which program is better how you are going to analyze out of these two programs which program is better okay now you can say sir we are going to propose different matrix matrix to tell you which program is better okay sir propose some matrix okay then one student says sir if out of these two programs this program is very easy to understand therefore this program is better you can create your own matrices matrix right so what you can say let us say if we have two programs and i want to know which program is better then you can say sir a program which is easier to understand that program is better okay i say okay any other thing then other student stands up other student says sir out of these two programs this program is taking less number of lines 
you can write this program into one single line therefore this program is better than this program because this program is taking more number of lines of code that means you are analyzing these programs on the basis of lines of code right then you can say one more student stands up and says sir I am saying that this program is more beautiful as compared to this program therefore this program is better ok I say let us suppose which program is more beautiful then one more student says from the last bench he says sir out of these two programs if I execute these programs if one of these programs is going to take less amount of time to solve the problem that program is better than the other program then he says sir we are talking about which program is going to take less amount of time to execute that means which program will take going to take less time to execute whatever program is going to take less time to execute that program is better as compared to the other program ok now one more student says sir out of these two programs we say one of these program is taking less lines of code but we did not see which of these programs is taking less amount of space because when I am saying less amount of space and less number of lines of code both are different things when I am saying less amount of space that means when you are going to execute this program then these two programs may need different amount of space while executing it may be because of recursive calls in onto the stack or it may be some constant space in this case right so that means which whatever program is going to take less amount of space ok now you can propose more number of uh, matrices like this right or you can say sir who have written this program mind program is better than so on you can have you can propose different types of matrices here but out of these matrices what do you think which matrix is the most effective one which matrix is going to tell you which one of these two programs is better for that purpose we use something called as this which is called as the time complexity of the program which is called as the time complexity of the program and this which is called as the space complexity of the program we have time complexity and the space complexity ok now when I am saying time complexity see less time to execute that means which program out of these two programs what which program is having uh, less time complexity and out of these two programs which are whatever going to take less amount of space that will be the space complexity these two are our primary matrices are our primary measures to check which one of these programs is better now when you have done these two comparisons then after that you can go for any of these comparisons for example you will say sir uh, the next matrix can be less lines of code the next matrix can be easier to understand the next matrix can be beautiful and so on right so you can make your own matrices but when I am saying which one of this program is better then I have to I will compare on the basis of the time complexity and the space complexity ok now what is the time complexity how can you say a program is better than the other program on the basis of time complexity ok that means let us do one thing let us say that we have a CPU here we have a computer here we build our home computer this is I don't know how to draw this but let us say we have a computer here I don't know how to draw this but let us say this is a computer ok and this is this complete is the program P1 and this complete is the program P2 ok now I am saying this is my server side or this is my system and I am executing this program P1 and we are, we are also executing the program P2 first I executed the program P1 and let us say the program P1 took 0 0.49 millisecond to execute 
and then I have executed the program P2 and let us say it is going to take 0 0.73 milliseconds to execute. Okay, that means we have we are basically working on the physical execution times of the program. That means if I am executing this, then on real time on my system, which program is going to take less amount of time? Okay, but there are some issues with it. Now, what is the issue? Let us say, uh, let us say uh, we have a client. This is a client, and this is you. You are a developer or a programmer and he is some, some, uh, some let us say he is having a company or a shop or something. Now he says, I want you to develop a program for me, for my business which is going to give me information about 10 products or 10 items for some sake. Let us suppose he says that sir my company is going to uh, deliver some online goods or I have I am creating some website so let us say we are creating some dating website he wants to create a dating website now on the dating website he, what he wants he wants to say let us say sir I want that in one minute or in one second a person should be able to view the list of hundred uh, males or females around his area male or females or around his area now out of this hundred females he says sir please write a program for me and you are very proud that you got a project and you are writing this program now let us say you are writing this program you have done the program and on your system it is giving you a list of 110 males or females around the area and now you deliver this program to your client and on client's machine, this program is going to say deliver somewhere around 80, the list of 80 males or females around the area. Then your client says, sir, on my system, this uh, program is not behaving better. This program is only giving 80, a uh, list of 80 person around the area, but I wanted 100 males. Then he gives the program back to you and says, please improve the program. Now you have done your best and you have improved the program. Now your program is going to give you a list of 120 people around the area. Then he delivers this program to, your, to the client and to, in the client machine this program is only going to deliver around 85 people around the area. Right? Now see you have done the program in a better way. You have done your best. You have delivered the program to the company or the client. Now the client is complaining that I wanted a program to deliver me at least 100 males or females but on my system this program is going to give you give only 80 to 85 now you say sir my system is a very high-end machine I am using a very high-end system which is created for developing but you are using a very outdated system which is very slow and on your system this is this program is does not behaving correctly now he says okay let me do one thing let me buy a new machine and let me test the program. Now he buys a new machine and then on his new machine this program is let us suppose giving 90 list of 95 people within next 1 or 20 uh, next minute or within next second. Now he says still I am not able to get this much data which you are promising me. Now you are, you are thinking, now you are thinking that what can be the reason why you are not, uh, why the client is not. Uh, getting this thing right so the, the reason can be the the machine which the programmer is using the machine or the computer which the programmer is using it may be high end and the uh, machine which the uh, uh, client is using that may also be high end but now what can be the reason why it is not giving you a better output here in both these cases this can be because of the reason that the machines which you are using and your client is using both these machines may be having different computer architectures different cpu architectures now what does it mean but what does that mean is that for example let us suppose you are having whenever you are going to execute this program and you are giving this program to your compiler then the compiler is going to convert this going to give you assembly code right let us suppose we have some random assembly code which is add r0 comma r1 subtract R2, R0, jump if non-zero, 
to instruction let us suppose line 1 or jump if 0 or whatever you have some instructions here you may be having a multiplication instruction right now if you are seeing addition instruction now if you are having two different CPU processors which are having different architectures let us suppose we have the CPU 1 and we have the CPU 2 now these two machines are having different architectures this addition instruction may take two clock cycles on this CPU to execute this addition instruction may take three clock cycles on this machine to execute this jump instruction may take three clock cycle on this machine to execute this jump instruction may take let us suppose two or one clock cycle on this machine to execute that means see I'm, I am I am not taking these values actually exactly I am just assuming that these instructions are taking different clock cycles or in practical they, are, they also take different clock cycles because of the CPU architectures right now these instructions are taking different clock cycles to execute now if you execute a program which is having more addition instruction as compared to more jump instruction or subtraction instruction then this program will run faster on this machine and the other program which is having less addition instruction or which is having more ad less addition instruction but maybe uh, more jump instruction jump if no zero instruction then this may this program may run faster on this this machine that means the program may behave differently on different machines with the different cpu architectures these instructions may take different time on different cpu architectures now how will you compare which program is better okay so let me just draw this same thing in diagrammatically here okay now let me tell you di diagrammatically what i am saying let, let, let us say we have two cpus this is the cpu 1 and this is the cpu 2 or the machine 2 right and we have two programs the program p1 and the program p2 and both these programs are solving the same problem let us suppose this is a program p1 and this is a program p2 and both these programs are solving the same problem right now i'm saying the program p1 is running faster on cpu C cpu1 and it is running slower on cpu2 when you are comparing the actual running time and the program p2 is running faster on cpu2 and the program p2 is running slower on cpu1 now why they are running they are behaving like this because i as i already told because these two cpus may be having different cpu architectures so one program may execute this instruction faster these instructions which are included in this program faster and other program may execute the recursive calls faster let us suppose let us suppose in some sense so these programs will take different execution times on these different machines now you tell me if you are going to compare these two programs on execution time which one of these program is better as compared to the other program think think about it what can be the metrics which you are going to use to tell whether which one of these program is faster as compared to the other program or which computer program is going to take less amount of time right as you have seen because we are basically dependent on the machine architecture we are comparing these programs on their actual running time right so by this you should all you should know that we cannot compare these programs on the basis of their actual machine running time or actual running time now you need a matrix to tell the person that this program is going to take less time on the basis of some criteria and this uh, criteria should be independent of actual running time that means or or you can say independent of machine architecture that means whatever criteria which you are going to use to compare these programs then that criteria should be independent of your machine architecture does not matter on what machine you are going to running this going to run these programs you should be independently able to compare two programs not on the basis of actual running time okay so you should be 
able to propose a matrix where you can compare the, those problems on the basis which should be independent of machine architecture. Now, what can be that matrix? Let us see. Now, what when I'm saying that this instruction is going to take two clock cycles here, this instruction is going to take some clock cycles here. This instruction, let us suppose it is take, taking three clock cycles here. Now, these clock cycles are based on your actual CPU architecture. Now, let us say if we have two machines and these clock cycles can be different on these two machines. Now, instead of taking this, let me just see how many instructions we are going to execute. If I can say how many instructions which we are going to execute, then on that basis, I can compare the programs. That means what I'm saying is we are going to compare actual number of instructions which are being executed which are being executed instead of the actual running time of these instructions now what i'm saying now whenever let us suppose we have some instructions we have n r not r1 we have subtract r2 r not and r1 and so on now in all these instructions, I'm not comparing, I'm not calculating what is the actual running time of these instructions on the machines. I'm saying this instruction, let us suppose it is going to take one unit time or one unit machine time. This instruction is also going to take one unit machine time. Now let me just count what are the number of instructions. Now if you are saying what are the number of instructions, then you can compare two programs. Which program is better? Okay. Now for that purposes here we are ignoring these actual constant values which is 2, 3, 4 and so on. These are, this is the actual values, clock cycle values which we are ignoring and we are also ignoring what is the actual running time. We are just calculating what are the number of instructions which we are executing and on the basis of number of instructions we can compare two programs and we can say that which program is going to execute faster as compared to the other program. That will be our matrix to solve the problem. Okay. Now here let me give you some examples here. Uh, what I mean to say and then let me introduce you the new to the new terminologies which we are going to say those new terminologies will be uh, the asymptotic notations right now let me write two programs here so in the same way let us say we have one program which is p1 uh, which is saying we have function uh, the main function now in the main function what I am doing is I am saying printf hi printf hi slash in something printf hi and so on you are writing the same instruction up to let us suppose 20 times you are printing hi 20 times ok so this is the first program there are how many lines of code a part of this main function we have 20 lines of code ok now we have the other program which is this main function which is saying uh, for int i is equal to 0 i less than 20 i plus plus and then we have printf hi Fine. Now, in these two programs, if you are saying in this program, how many instructions are there? In this program, let me count the instructions. We have, this is the instruction 1, this is the instruction 2, this is the instruction 3, up to so on, we have 20 instructions. That means we have 20 instructions. Okay. Now, in this program, we have the first instruction and the second instruction. That means we have two instructions to execute. What do you think? Which one of this program is executing less amount of less lines of code, or which one of this program is executing less number of statements? And I'm saying you have to compare these two programs. Now, which one of these programs is executing less number of lines of uh, less number of statements? Okay. Now in this, let us suppose every instruction is going to take one unit time. This is going to take one unit time. This is also going to take one unit time. This is also going to take one unit time. 
up to so on all these instructions are going to take one unit time to execute let us say we this instruction going going to take 20 unit times to execute 20 unit night time to execute okay now in this program if you see this instruction the first instruction int i is equal to 0 how many times this instruction will be executed this will be executed only once therefore it is going to take one unit time to execute because this instruction is getting only once now the next instruction i is less than 20 how many times this instruction will be executed what do you think so this instruction will be executed how many times first of all when i is 0 to 19 when the value of i is 0 starting this is 0 to 19 so when the value of i is 0 to 19 this instruction will be true right that means till that time executed uh, 20 times and then when the value of i became 20 then this instruction will be false therefore this instruction is executed up to so many times how many times 21 times for 20 times this instruction was true and the, at the 21st time this instruction became false and how many times this instruction will be executed this will be executed again 21 times how many times this instruction will be executed this will be executed again uh, 20 times okay therefore in total how many times these instructions are executed so 1 plus 21 plus 21 plus 20 which is equal to 1 plus 42 plus 20 which is equal to let us say it is 63 instructions are being executed 63 instructions are being executed and in this program only 20 instructions are being executed therefore here it is going to take 63 unit of time or you can say 63 units here just say let us suppose it is saying 63 units to execute unit time to execute okay now here now as you can see we have compared these two programs on the basis of number of instructions being executed now in this program in the actual scenario we have we have uh, neglected some things what are those things if the, let us suppose we, we had this program and r0 comma r0 r0 for every instruction we have neglected that what is the actual clock cycles here it is saying that, that we it is going to take three clock cycle to execute on first cpu and two clock cycles to execute on other CPU that means we have executed these actual times we have ignored these actual times and instead of taking these actual times we are taking one unit time and here also taking one unit time that means both the instructions are taking one unit of time we have ignored the actual values again here in this case if this is going to take some constant time and this is going to take some constant time then I am going to take guess one unit time and I am going to tell you how and we can say this as one unit time right for this i can just say for simply saying it is as as it is a constant number because it was also a con constant number we made this constant number as one here also it was a constant number we made this constant number as one therefore in the same way we can make this constant number as one unit time again which is a constant time again here also i can say it is going to take some constant time i'm going to tell you how mathematically we can do this okay now for these purposes we i have to ignore uh, i have to introduce one more terminology here that is the uh, asymptotic notations okay now let us see what are the asymptotic notations and how we can uh, compare two programs using the asymptotic notations 